Hey guys, I hope you're well. Uh, very different video for you tonight. Uh, as some of you might know from watching my live stream, which is on uh, most weeknights UK time, um, I have been designing and sort of collecting the parts that I need to build a new sim rig for my tiny little cramped office space here in the UK where I record all my race videos and tutorials. Um, the day has come, the parts have all finally arrived. Um, I've been waiting a little bit of extra time for the seat that I wanted because it was out of stock. Uh, I've got it here now, uh, so I'm going to start the build. And uh, a few of my viewers have asked if I wouldn't mind recording it um, to um, share with you guys. I hope it's useful. I hope it's, you know, kind of something a bit different anyway. Um, this whole thing comes in three parts. Uh, the first part, uh, video one, is me... Uh, designing the rig. It's an 80-20 rig, so aluminium profiles, um, which is very popular in the sim racing community as, as a platform to, to build a, a really versatile sort of sim rig. Uh, the first part is me using some free software to design it based on my specifications, which I'll talk more about in a bit. Um, uh, the second part, this part, um, is basically the build process, how 80-20 works, um, you know, doing some of the building, probably most of the building in fast forward, hopefully. All being well, we'll get it done. Um, no idea how long it's going to take. I've never done anything like this before. And then we're going to follow this up with a third part later on, which is basically the finishing touches and my first drive in my new rig to see how it all goes. Um, before we do all that, though, and before I walk you through the components and, and show you what I've got, um, I thought it'd be fun to just have a little look at what I've been using up to now, have a little tour of my tiny little pokey office uh, so you can understand my limitations on what I could do. Uh, I certainly couldn't just go out and buy um, a top of the range uh, sim labs set up, for example, I've just got nowhere to put it. Um, so let's have a little tour around. We'll look at my old rig and then we'll have a little look at what I've got to come. So exciting stuff. Uh, I hope you like it. If you've got any questions, ask in the comments um, and I'm happy to uh, have a chat about that later on. So let's get cracking. Okay, well, we are starting here at the entrance to my office. Uh, I've got two French doors that lead out to the garden uh, and to the back door of my house. Um, if I flip the camera around, I will uh, show you uh, what I'm up against in terms of trying to get some sim racing done. So here we go. So uh, here's a quick look at my office. It's a bit of a state, you must excuse me. Here's all my books and magazines related to what I do for work. Um, here's my computer corner, my rig corner. I'll show you more on that in a minute. Uh, in the background there, you can see the door going through to what's left of our garage. Um, most of this office is, is what was the garage. Uh, there's the other wall, uh, there's a the skylight. It's a very, very small galley style room with an office desk running the length of it. Sometimes my wife works at home as well, so we share the office space. Uh, let's have a little look at my rig. Oh, here's my uh, classic Roberts radio, which is actually a um, internet radio now powered by Raspberry Pi. Awesome. Um, so here's my rig. This is this is my racing chair currently, as you can see, is a very old uh, restyled chair that is flimsy and knackered. And I have my rig here, which is the Fanatec um, 2.5. Uh, I've got a nice Fanatec rim on there. I've got the Fanatec V2 pedals down there. I've got a cardboard box that I prop against the wall so that uh, my uh, my whole setup doesn't move around while I'm driving. Uh, and it's all kind of held together. And I say held together very loosely by this next level racing um, sort of A-frame, essentially. And it's done, it's done me a good service over the last few years. It is now knackered. It doesn't really stand up to the requirements uh, that I have now. Um, as you can see, there is a large amount of play in it, um, which is really not good for force feedback and really not good for the health and longevity of my setup. 
here is my stream cam uh, and my PC. It's not on at the moment, so you can't see a lot. Um, but I will show you a bit more of that later. And there's my uh, Oculus Rift S. And the monitor that I use just to make sure that the stream's working all right. Okay, so that's what I've got now. Let's have a look at what I've got to come. Now, doesn't look like much at the moment, but here we go. I've got a few piles of 8020 uh, aluminium profile, aluminium if you're in America. Hi, how are you doing? Um, there's not a lot of it you might notice and that's because there isn't a lot of space for it to fit in. So I've been really, really quite extreme um, in terms of trying to design something as minimal and as flexible as possible. Um, this in the background here is my wheel plate. So it's a universal wheel plate uh, that's going to attach to the deck uh, so I can stick my wheel on it. And I've got a couple of uh, side mounts for a racing seat. And here is my racing seat. Um, it's a Bimarco Cobra 2. Nothing super fancy, but it's a classic seat. And it's been around for quite a few years. Uh, it's bloody comfortable. And one of the best things about it is, is it's very small and it sits very upright. So it takes up very little space, which is ideal. So um, to complement all that, we've got a whole world of little components down here that we're going to need. I've got a bunch of um, uh, tape and uh, ties and stuff like that. Uh, I've got all the nuts and bolts I need. I've got some cool adjustable um, bolts here that I can use. Uh, this is going to be handy for my pedal deck because the pedal deck is going to be um, adjustable in height and length. The seat's going to be fixed in place. Then we've got all the connectors that we need for fixing the profile together. And probably most important of all is this little number down here. Let's get this puppy out. This is my cup holder. Excellent. I need somewhere to put my drink. It's going in there. What a beauty. All right. Um, and that's it. That's literally everything I've got. I don't need anything else. I'm now going to try and figure out what the hell I'm going to do to put this together. So let's get on with it. So here we go, guys. This is my first ever right angle joint with 8020. Can't you see it's a work of art? And if we zoom out, we've got basically what is going to make up the frame for our pedals. Our pedals are obviously going to sit across here down this way. And what we need to do next is basically just fix in the rest of the brackets for each corner. Um, and then we'll be in a position once we've built the rest of the frame for this to connect against the uprights where the the pedal sets, sorry, the uh, where the wheel sits, um, and then we'll use our adjustable um, lever uh, locks to then be able to tilt the whole thing up, down, in, out, uh, so that we can uh, make it really nice and adjustable. We can get a really good fit. So I'm just going to whiz through that, and then we'll start making the base proper. Exciting. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that took a lot longer and a lot sweatier than I thought it was going to be. This is the simplest part of the project, but a good place to start so that I can get to grips with what I'm working with. Um, yeah, we've got a pedal deck. The pedals are going to fit. This is a good start. I'm going to get cracking with the wheel base now. Right, 
right, so we've ended up with our wheel deck and uh, kind of uprights uh, for the wheel base to sit on. Um, I've got my universal plate here. Uh, unfortunately, during shipping, it got damaged. Luckily, this is the side that the wheel's gonna sit on, so I am not too fussed. And she's basically gonna go on there like that. And we're gonna affix the wheel base. And Bob is your uncle, um, or so I'm told. Okay. Okay, uh, what's and all, um, I've made my first catastrophic mistake. I've put these fellas together and fixed them all in place nice and neatly, not too tight that I can't adjust them, but how the heck am I gonna put the screws in for this fella? Um, there's nowhere for them to go. So I'm gonna have to undo the whole bloody thing to put those uh, little locking bolt things in here so that I can bolt it in place nicely. Uh, what a spanner. Scrap that. Turns out you can poke them through. So you don't need to undo all this to get that in there. Learning something new every minute. Good fun. All right, guys, here's a quick demo of, with it with the uh, wheelbase on and the plate. I couldn't really film that bit, mainly because I was using my phone as a level. <laughs> so I can get the base level. But basically, we're screwed in there. We're screwed in on the base. I'm using the angle extender at the moment. I think I might in time change that to use these little levers down here to be able to adjust the angle on the uh, on the base itself. Just get it even lower profile. But we'll see how we get on with that. Obviously, we want some angle on the wheel. Otherwise, that ain't going to be much fun. Uh, so, on to the final bit of the build, which is putting this base together, the longest parts of the uh, extrusions, and then fixing my lovely chair in place. Goodbye, bad back. Fingers crossed, anyway. Okay, guys, what you're looking at here is the basic um frame of the base um at the back here uh these are for the seat and that far end is obviously a support strut to keep everything tight i'm actually using the seat base as support struts for the entire base as well i've stripped this design back to the absolute bare minimum normally you would see other profiles coming lengthways um, but i'm stripping right out mainly so as i can keep the height to an absolute minimum so that I can fit everything or well, two thirds of the entire wheelbase under my uh, under my desk here. Um, so uh, there we go. Let's get this bit together. And then we're two thirds of the way there and not far away from being home free, he says optimistically.
All right, guys, I managed to get the seat on, side mountings onto my brackets attached at the base. Now, this is obviously a super low profile rig. We need as much of the rig to fit under that desk as we can. Uh, one word of advice, put the side mounts on the chair first. I attached the side mounts to the base and then tried to attach the chair to the side mounts. I think it would be a million times easier to do it the other way. Um, had I paid any attention to any advice online, I probably would know that already. So, time to fit the um, wheel uh, base struts and bits to the rig. All right, guys, well, look, here it is. This is my super, super low rider. We are in, we are fixed. The only things I've left loose at the moment are the bottom screws so that I can adjust uh, the wheel struts forward and back. And I also need to adjust the height level of, where the, of the wheel deck um, so that I can just get it exactly where I need it because I can't move the seat, the seat's fixed. So I need to move that. I don't need to worry about the pedals because the pedals will be free moving. We'll move on to that next. I'm going to fiddle around with this, get it to the right height, get it to the right distance, stick the wheelbase on, and then we'll do the pedals. Sweet. Oof, the wheelbase is on, but I reckon it's a bit high. It's higher than chin height at the moment. So I'm going to go a little bit lower. See how that feels. We don't want to get too carried away. Um, but yeah, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. How do you like, like my stickers? They're not particularly exciting, but they're stickers. Sort out that brain bias. So, after uh, figuring out the right height and the right distance for the wheel deck, I noticed a issue with the plate, the universal wheel plate, other than the fact that it came scratched to hell. Um, just with these two bolts in on uh, this depth, and in fact any depth, just absolutely, there was loads and loads of play. Had the wheel on there briefly, um, and it was just rocking, um, and no good at all. Had a minor panic, but then I discovered Actually, what I can do is using the spare angle brackets that I thankfully had and placing uh, one of the locking bolts behind it um, and screwing these through here, I can actually fit an angle bracket here like so and it's super secure and I'm pretty sure that's going to do what I need to do to keep my wheelbase rock steady let's have a try see what happens there's uh, zero play in this puppy now so i am happy wheel base time is over time to move on to the pedals all right guys super late now so i'm going to call it a night i'm going to be back at it in the morning going to finish off and hopefully have my first test drive. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit rested and I've had a little bit of a tidy up and actually I got a bit carried away and I finished the pedal mounts. Um, but it's super simple. So I'll give you a quick walk around it now and share how I've uh, got it set up um, and how it's managed to save me a few quid as well in part. So let's have a little look. All right, here we are looking at the pedals from the back. These are the Fanatec V2s. Um, as you can see, I have just bolted in the 
two feet at the back and the two feet at the front onto my A-frame for the pedal deck. Uh, I had to take the kick plate off uh, to do that off the pedal set, but that's fine. That'll go back on in a minute. Now let's have a look at the way the pedals are actually fixed. So all I've done is I've slid the A-frame for the pedals into the inside edge of the uh, uprights for the uh, uh, wheel deck. And I'm using these really cool uh, adjustable levers. And what they let me do is obviously tighten and loosen them. Uh, and you can also pull, if you pull them out, they spin freely so you can you can get a, get some purchase or move it if it's blocked, uh, which is really quite neat. And when you're done, you can just pull them out, turn them to a sort of suitable position and leave them there. Um, now I've got two at the back here and they're holding, and the reason these are good because they're, they're angleable, you can angle them, you can slide. Um, so I can slide the pedals in so that they're flush with the end of the rig itself, which is here, or I can have them slide out like this, but also you can tilt them as well. So once you've got your perfect angle, you tighten those two, and I've actually got another two here at this end, and these ones, if I loosen them off and move them, I can actually make the wheel deck itself have more or less tilt, and obviously I've done exactly the same on the other side. So when I need to go into storage mode for the rig, when, for example, my wife wants to use the office and she doesn't want to be tripping over it, or we need to get through to the garage there, um, I can um, just really quickly unbolt these four levers, slide it right in, and it's right out the way. Um, so there you go, that is the design. Normally you would have extra beams and cro cross sections running through here um, to uh, sort of support the wheels, but these four bolts, uh, lever bolts, do an absolutely brilliant job, hold it really, really, really firmly. There's absolutely no play in this whatsoever. It's solid as a rock. So I am chuffed to bits with that. All I've got to do is make sure my bolts are tight, um, put the wheel plate, uh, sorry, the uh, kick plate back on, and we are almost done. Super job. Another quick job I did uh, between recording last night and today um, was I adjusted the height of the seat slightly. I raised it um, a notch just so I could get my seating position more in line with the pedals the way I like them tilted. Um, so we've got a nice kind of modern GT car feel there where the wheel decks are actually quite high or missing in line with the seat. Um, so that works quite well and it also helped me adjust underneath as well, get a little bit more clearance there. Um, the last real job to do is the finishing touches. Now normally I'd be super lazy and not even bother doing things like putting the end caps on that I sort of spent the money on. They were really cheap but um, you know they're a bit of a pain in the butt to be honest but frankly this stuff's quite sharp. Um, it seems to shed kind of metal shavings as well um, so be be wary of that if you're putting together an 80 20 rig you are going to have lots of tiny tiny little shards of metal all over the workspace that you use to put this uh, to put your rig together um, so actually since it's sharp uh, since it likes to kind of uh, leave me little presents all over the floor uh, in terms of dangerous sharp bits of metal um, I am going to put the end caps on. So we've got a good few to do. I've put a couple on already. Um, like the ones on the top here. If you've got a rubber mallet, you're going to want it. They're absolute buggers to get on. And once they're on, they're staying on. So let's get that done. And I will be back shortly. Okay, so here's the finished rig with a few tweaks and additions. We've got the cup holder. Um, we've actually got our gear shifter on there. We've got some black colored strips that run the, the length of the 8020 just to give it a, a little bit of a look. 
uh, it really helps finish it off and make it look tidy. I corrected the um, uh, the seat brackets, <laughs> the side brackets. I've got a little fan on the top there that really helps. I use VR, it gets incredibly hot. Um, and we've uh, obviously had a tweak to the wheelbase here where I've added some more of those adjustable levers, slightly different types of adjustable levers so that I can actually angle the wheel deck itself instead of using the extension for the, uh, you know, the angle extension for the wheelbase. Um, and it's really good. It's it's thoroughly adjustable. It's incredibly solid when you lock it into place. I've got a slightly smaller angle on there. I think it's like 13, 14 degrees as opposed to 20 degrees on, on the Fanatec uh, angle bracket. Uh, the gear shifter, it's just the basic um, shifter from Thrustmaster. Um, I, I forget what it's called, TH8A or something like that. Um, it sits well there, it does the job. I don't use it terribly frequently, um, but um, uh, I think it's, uh, it's good when I, when, I, when I dig out the MX-5 and uh, you know, do a bit of uh, skip barber. Um, it's all good fun. And then the wheel deck is done. Uh, a bit of cable management as well, because it was a bit of a hive down there. Um, really happy with the positioning now. Um, I actually changed uh, the way I, I, I've set it up so that the locking levers are actually just all on the uh, uprights for the wheel deck. And this really has um, helped me sort of allow to change the angle, change the height a lot easier. And also uh, allowed me to put it into storage mode in, um, uh, in, in a lot less time. It's a lot easier to do that now. Uh, so here it is tucked under the desk. As you can see, it creates a lot more space to be able to get behind, to be able to get, open the door and get into the garage. Um, and it's pretty tidy and it's out the way and I can, I can work next to it without any problems at all, which is awesome. Um, and most importantly, I measured twice and cut once and it's a really good snug fit in there. And because the seat's nice and upright, uh, the seat doesn't get in the way too much when I'm, when I'm trying to lug stuff through from the garden into the garage. So I'm happy, my wife's, I, I wouldn't say happy, but she's, she's bearing it, so that's good news. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really chuffed with my, with my little sim rig. It's rock solid, it's comfortable. It's taken me a long time to find the seating position that works for me. I think it's actually taken me a few weeks, but it was, it was worth the effort and I'm absolutely, absolutely chuffed to bits with it. And it cost me very, very little money to put together. Um, so yeah, good luck with your rigs. If you've got any questions um, about uh, anything I've done here or anything that you're looking to do, please do drop a comment below uh, and I'll keep an eye on it from time to time. All right, guys, I hope this hasn't been too rambly and too boring. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time. Cheers.